All right, and hello and welcome to this quick tutorial of me doing a 30 minute digital Photoshop color study of this beautiful painting by Glenn Dean. Now I specifically timed myself for 30 minutes on this, no more, no less. I did speed it up to 15 minutes so you wouldn't get bored and run away. But yes, the original intention was this to be a quick gesture study, not focusing on detail, but more about capturing the gesture of the characters and the landscape around them. So I had a lot of fun with this painting. I learned a lot about colors along the way as well. And of course, capturing um, the posture and gesture of characters, which is something that I'm actually don't do a lot of. And it's my weak, weak point. And so I uh, challenged myself with around nine Glendine uh, master studies because I wanted to practice painting people and horses and just to sort of get my feet dipped in. So you can see here, just like I do with my gouache paintings, I start off with a bright kind of sienna background. Now with Photoshop, you can play around with a lot more um, different colors. You can start off your background. I usually like to start off with the same old kind of um, sienna color, uh, change the saturation sometimes. And you can see I'm using my favorite block and brush. I can't remember where I got it to be honest, but it is a simple oval brush with slight texture and a really nice taper off uh, towards the end allows me to get really nice bold and sweeping brush strokes and get big shapes in one stroke and that's basically the same how i like to paint in a gouache painting right i like to use my big one inch flat brush and i like to capture my big shapes right in the beginning to block in those big shapes before i start honing in on the smaller shapes so that's what i'm trying to do right now i started off with a quick sketch simply with the hard brush tool no fancy brush, it's just the hard brush tool. And now, because I'm such a shape person, I, I think in terms of shape. And for me, I need to start slapping down shapes right away so that I can see the painting coming to life or else it doesn't work for me that way. So I'm very much a shape person. As in, I think in terms of shapes, designing the shapes and how those shapes work well together. Right now, I've just switched to a sort of flat brush and this is one of my other favorite brushes because it does emulate the flat brush I use in gouache painting. So the brushes I choose are very much similar to how I go gouache painting, uh, doing gouache painting and vice versa. I don't paint with a lot of brushes. A lot of people ask me what kind of brushes I use. I use probably a max of three brushes in any painting. My favorite being the oval block and brush, this flat brush, another textured brush that I think I might be using later, later on that kind of feels like it gives a little bit of nice watercolor texture in a sense. And uh, did I mention the hard brush, the hard, the simple round hard brush. So right now what I'm focusing on is I'm focusing on getting the value of this painting well the value and the proportions and that is something that i struggle with and you'll see me sort of edit cut and paste lasso tool and fix things here and there um because i don't draw a lot of people i always am struggling with the proportions the the the, the scale of the horse to the people the distance from the horse to the other person so things like that are gonna need a lot of uh sewing and not sewing <laughs> but editing and cutting and pasting and so right here, you can see I've just taken the big flat brush and I've just blocked in the sky. And now I have a big comprehensive block in of everything because being timing myself on this, I need to make sure I get the overall picture as fast as I can, right? So I think a tip um, that I have that can help when approaching a study is, are you studying a uh, color? Are you studying for gesture? Are you studying uh, for speed to get faster? You know, picking a, a clear goal for each study that you do will really help you narrow down and really hyper focus on what you want to focus on. I would suggest that it's better to choose one to two things to focus on. For example, in this, I really want to focus on gesture and color. Gesture, primary, color, second. Um, the color sort of obviously came as a byproduct of painting it in color and at the same time being mindful of how the colors are interacting in relationships with each other. But my primary uh, goal is to really capture the gesture of this piece in the most broadest sense as I could without being too nitpicky. Sometimes your goal could be, you know, to... Um, to play with certain brushes and you can make it your means that just to really go out of your comfort zone and explore different brushes right sometimes your goal could be to um 
really take your time, but focus on character and maybe just do a black and white study. Um, so depending on what your goal is, it will differ and it will affect the outcome of and, and the process of your painting. And so I really find that helpful when I think about what is it that I want to get out of this painting. You can see here in a matter of, you know, five-ish minutes or less, I have um, gotten a, a good block in that I'm happy with. And now I can really start thinking about the little nuances, such as the turn of the body of the horse's body, the, the ambient light, the reflected light, refining the gesture of the characters a little bit more, things like that. Now, right now I am using that awesome textured brush that I talked about earlier. And you can see it just adds a little bit of a noise that is not over the top, but really nice just to add a little bit of zing to the painting. And so I really like this brush. You can see it has a really nice taper um, as I'm putting down those strokes right now. And I don't wanna overdo that because again, I'm, I'm not playing with textures. I'm not really, that's not really my point. I just wanna just add enough to get a little bit of that uh, texture and color variation. So right now, what I really love about this painting, what attracted me first about this painting was the use of this, these beautiful neutral grays that Glendine does. And a crazy tip that I actually, not tip, but an observation or epiphany that I did from doing a bunch of his paintings was how in Photoshop you can, when you choose a desaturated version of that color and you put it on that color, it looks like it's complement. So an example is there's lots of warms in the mountains, right? But in the mountains, if I just chose a more desaturated version of that red purple, it would actually start looking like a green, which is the complement of red, right? And so when I put that, it blew my mind because I thought that I had to, you know, always choose green or its complement, but you can actually choose its desaturated version. And to me, that is when I mix gouache, I am literally mixing its complement to desaturate that color, right? So if I were mixing gouache, I would mix red and a little bit of viridian and a white to get um, to neutralize the red a little bit and desaturate. And so it's kind of the same thing with digital painting. And I love finding those crossroads and to me it's really exciting. Now, as you can see, um, uh, it, and the, the mountains are actually darker in the foreground and the light and the lighter parts are actually the sky and these beautiful muted yellows and greens in the foreground of that sloping hill. I love how um, uh, the characters are cast in this beautiful bluish ambient light, but there's this really nice hint of pink in the background. And as I'm painting these, I am making these subconscious notes in the back of my head of how he's using these colors to create such a pleasing landscape and how they also follow the logic of light, right? So again, right now I am just continually fine-tuning, tweaking certain things. Now it's not going to be perfect because of course you have a very limited time to, you know, in a matter of 30 minutes, not everything can be perfect, but I hope that I have at least captured the gesture of, of this painting. And of course, stay true to the values and the uh, color relationships, right? I love to look at everything in relationships and I get a lot of these thoughts from actually reading non-art books Funna, funnily, that's not a word hilariously enough um, and I draw these connections with um, you know, philosophy books self-help, business um, you know, fiction books you name it um, so, you know, every time I'm doing a painting I'm trying to see how everything is working symbiotically together and how those colors are vibing and vibrating off of each other. To me, it's not just enough to just choose one area to hyper focus on. I need to look at the whole painting as a whole. So you can see here now, because of my lack of planning, apparently I needed to expand the canvas, which happens basically all the time. Um, so, you know, the good thing about Photoshop versus painting traditionally is that you can do that very easily in a matter of seconds. And so those are kind of a couple of things that, you know, I love to talk about um, the, 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 the concepts I take in digital that I apply to gouache and vice versa. However, there are some things that are much easier digitally and there are some things that are much easier traditionally. You know, for, for one thing, you can control Z a lot easier uh, in digital. So if I were to do this in gouache, 
it would be much different, right? You know, I would really have to carve and sculpt my way through. And there's no such thing as control C to go back to a previous version of the painting that you liked. But gouache really lets you problem solve that way because you can't control Z. And I, uh, I really enjoy that. I really enjoy that building up of that carving and pushing and pulling, carving these shapes, bringing back these shapes. And it's just that constant pushing and pulling that is just that dialogue between me and the painting, right? You know, it's so important to let the painting speak to you. And so you can see here that I just put some, um, uh, some scattered brush strokes just to indicate some of that foliage texture but again not trying to overdo it right and here again I'm just throwing in some I like to call it marbleized texture and here you know it's not to overdo it it's just to add a little bit of interest um, just for your eye to catch on and latch on to some areas and you know once I've mostly gotten my values right and I've gotten the gesture now I can kind of start to slow down a little bit and see where I can push certain things, where I can push the value a little bit lighter, where maybe I can just push the saturation a little bit more in some areas, you know, just now it's time to slow down a little bit and just tweak little by little. So as you've probably watched from my other videos, I like to start large and bigger picture and then I like to zone in and uh, like a funnel kind of like an upside down pyramid, I guess you could say. And so now here I'm thinking about, okay, where can I push some of the values a little bit? You can see I'm kind of just really picking a desaturated reddish purple, but it almost feels blue, right? It kind of takes on a bluish tint to me at least. And I'm just trying to see where I can push um, these subtle color shifts. For me, all the fun comes in pushing those subtle color shifts. Once you have the big picture and you can slow down, the fun really comes in just pushing really, really small areas very slightly. Not drastic changes, but very small changes. And if you take the time and let yourself step back, you will see how much those little changes can make a difference. I mean, sometimes it's even in the posture of a person. Like right now, I'm just fixing her posture a little bit, but I'm adding slightly, just a slightly lighter value just to give more dimension to her body, right? So we're almost wrapping up this painting. You know, like I said before, I'm just maybe adding some quick, quick textures here and there, quick little tweaks. Right now, I'm using the mixer brush, um, which actually is, I think, the thing that simulates uh, traditional painting the most. Um, it is right there. You can see on the left side of my uh, tools panel, you can see it's under brushes. And if you just hold down on brushes a little bit, you'll see the option for mixer brush. And I have uh, my own tool presets for mixer brush, as you can see in my tool presets panel. Uh, but I really only use one and I didn't even make it. A friend gave it to me. I'm very lazy at making my own brushes, so I don't really do that. And honestly, if you're wondering how many brushes I use in a uh, digital painting, I really only use maybe four max, but two, two main brushes. And it's my block and brush, maybe one for texture, a couple for texture. And I actually absolutely adore the hard brush, the simple round hard brush, no opacity, no, no taper. I mean, there's a taper at the edge, but no texture, no nothing, just very, the simplest brush you can use. I actually really love it because you, if you know how to play with it, right, you can actually get so many cool shapes and really um, get some really interesting dance of strokes. And I didn't really find that I loved it until last year, so um, 2020. And so, yeah, those, the, if you ask me, you know, those, I, I like my block and brush, a hard brush, and maybe one brush that has some nice marbleized texture, the kind of texture you can see in the sky to give a kind of traditional looking look, uh, maybe like watercolor or gouache or oil. And uh, that's about it though. So this is the final product. As you can see, you know, very loose, no detail, but you know, for me, it was a quick 30 minute study and I think it turned out all right for what I was aiming for. So thank you so much for watching that. Please follow me on my Instagram at Tiffany Mang Art. I also have a gum road where I have a lot of free tutorials. And of course, if you have any questions, email me at Tiffany Mang Art. And if you haven't already hit the subscribe button, see you later. Bye.